<laughs> All right, guys. That was, hey, dude, that was a rough wrestling match. It's time for the Wrestling Perspective, the only podcast with two Major League Baseball All-Stars, one four-time Stanley Cup winner, guy in the band rancid, Lars. How are you? And Pete nice. Williams. Uh, tonight we are doing the Sweet 16, but Pete, yeah. how yeah. do we do a Sweet 16 with only four of us? Don't we need somebody to break the tie? Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me see what I could do here. Um, hit the magic button because guess what, kid? Okay, here we go. We have a special guest. Drum Joy- roll. Joining us oh, here. Alex. There he is. Sideways is Chris Sabin. Hey, oh, Chris. wow. Nice. Twist it. There you go. <laughs> What's up, buddy? There we go. Hello. Hello. Chris oh, Sabin. Hey, switch your, can you switch your thing from Josh's iPhone to, uh, I don't know, Sabin? <laughs> you know how to do that? Uh, I mean, Come on. What, like wow. in the settings and all that, change like the permanent name Probably. of my phone. Either, yeah. either way. Uh, well, it's, it's fine. It's that, fine or Dennis, it's fine. how about right. you just edit it out? I, I don't have he's boring, <laughs> Hey, dude, he's boring Josh's iPhone. Dude, we don't do this on, on that's, our own that's phone. Right. Josh left yeah. the room. So, uh, Chris Sabin, uh, tonight we are doing a Sweet 16. Uh, thank you for joining us. You've been on the show with Petey and I a million times. We're thankful to have you. And uh, a quick introductions. Chris Sabin, Lars Fredrickson from Rancid. How you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Darren, nice to meet you too. Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion in your hometown here in Detroit. Chris Sabin. Well done. Oh, uh, grind line and the Mortar City machine guns. You love it. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you, sir. So, you too, buddy. We, there's no sirs on this podcast. It's d <clears throat> That's Come on, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's hey, Josh? That's hey, Josh's hey, iPhone. the Joshy thing. Yeah, we'll work through it. <laughs> so for everybody new listening, everybody around the world, Chris Sabin, here's what we do. We have a Sweet 16. We all vote to see who goes on to the next round. And you have to explain why. Why you pick, why your vote is, and that the winner is the champion. This week, it's the 2020 MVP of wrestling. Not the actual MVP, of course, but MVP. Who was the 2020 MVP? And I'll be honest, uh, Chris, before you came on, originally on this list, we had the Motor City Machine Guns. I took them off when I found out you were coming just because we would all vote you to the front because you're here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's nice of you to say. Then as you're supposed to say, Untrue. besides... Unanimously, it's the Motor City Machine Guns, but we're voting for second place, first. Second place. Honest, right okay. Away. All right. Gotcha. gotcha. So, mm. uh, yeah. And by the way, thank you, Chris, for coming on last second with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. No, thank- no problem. No problem at all. All right, kids. Here we go. It's the first uh-huh. round. It's hard because this is. You know what? Let me just say something. We were talking about vasectomies earlier, and. Uh- <laughs> Sorry, but I'm just gonna, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get, our, we're gonna air our dirty laundry there, Petey. Uh, but <laughs> these sweet 16s are like a kick in the fucking sack sometimes. I just want to be on. Oh, yeah. No, I would agree. I would agree. Oh, with wait. It's, it's... <laughs> Go ahead. Dan. My question is, is it, is it worse than a vasectomy or a reverse vasectomy? We're gonna find out. <laughs> Dude, do you see the storyline guy how deep he just got there saving i love storylines and i just got <laughs> more deep in there you missed that conversation there's one thing that you'll find out about d mac is when he speaks he definitely doesn't shoot blanks yeah. ah, oh. boom, boom. Oh. Well, i got six I'm baby six kids yeah. you Jesus. haven't had a verbal bisectomy <laughs> this podcast is a verbal visectomy right now. Say that fast. Don't make any any woman listening will go sterile by listening. To <laughs> All right. Well, let's start with the first round because these things take a lot of time and we get pretty in depth. First round, first matchup. It's Bray Wyatt versus Cody Rhodes, guys. Who is the 2020 MVP? PD, I'm going to let you start first. 
Okay. We have uh, Bray and Cody Rhodes. Um, that's a tough one right off the get-go. Um, obviously, Cody had a fantastic year with AEW. Um, you know, running the company and as well as wrestling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but my vote, I say it's going to go with Bray. Bray had a, a heck of a year. Uh, if we're also, uh, you know, putting in the fiend with him. But, you know, I think he's more yeah. uh, must-watch TV uh, just not knowing with his character and stuff what's going to happen next. So uh, I'm going to give it to Bray on that one. D-Mac? I'm going to go Bray, too. I think Petey brought up great points and stuff, but when you put in Bray Wyatt's whole performance and you get the Fiend and everything, he's must see TV just because you don't know what he's going to do. He's got the fun house and everything. Cody, Cody, if we were saying who's uh, – you know, business-wise or whatever is also in the top 16 of change in wrestling. But, um, you know, it, it is it is closer than you think, but I'll go uh, Bray Wyatt too. Lars. Oh, that's a tough one because, like, you know, it has been mentioned, obviously Cody's, you know, up there now. He's sort of elevated himself to far greater heights than I think anybody ever really saw him going in a lot of ways. I, th I don't think if he was still with the WWE, he would be where he's at, honestly. So that's, but it's, I mean, it's Bray Wyatt. I, th I think if Cody was three years older, I, I might be changing my mind. I feel like he's like in a transitional kind of thing. It's like, I don't know if that's going to make any sense to you guys, but I feel like he needs Absolutely. to mature a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to have to go Bray Wyatt just because he's, I think his character, um, you know, the fiend, I think it's next level. I think that's who the fucking taker should have been passing the torch to. Um, and I just think that he elevates that. He's like the, he's like you said, D he, he's must see TV. Our votes don't count Chris, but who would you have gone with? I was going to say Bray Wyatt, just based on all his whole uh, new theatrical character and just all the stuff that uh, I mean, I'm mainly thinking about WrestleMania and his match with John Cena, just how ridiculous it was. And just how, uh, you know, over the top, I found myself like laughing and saying how ridiculous. And at the same time, I was captivated and thinking it was awesome. So, I mean, I don't know, just the, the wide range of emotions that the, the Bray Wyatt character makes me feel I'm going to go with Bray. See, I was going to go Cody Rhodes because of what he did in, in 2020 with AEW, the TNT television title. I don't know. I thought overall, if we're talking MVPs, I don't know if AEW in 2020 would have been where it is without Cody Rhodes. And WWE would have been in the exact same place even without Bray Wyatt. So if we're looking at it from an MVP point of view, I would have had a gone Cody Rhodes, but my vote doesn't count. So Bray Wyatt moves on. <laughs> well, but I think to your point though, Den or Dennis, is that like without, I mean, Bray Wyatt is pretty much the only reason why I even actually, actually watched the, that, that show. Well, you, Lars, you, Lars, you nailed it. If three years from now, Cody Rhodes is in a transition. So, like if if this was Jericho for they're, they're, the the AEW needed needed those other guys more as a wrestler. I think Cody Rhodes more as the big pitcher, like you see, um, TNT doing the other the, the big show, doing more you know like Miz stuff, right to bring bigger attention, but not the ring attention. Because yeah, Bray Wyatt is one of the best. All right, next one it's Drew McIntyre versus the Hurt Business, guys. I, I lumped them all in together because I feel like any one of the Hurt Business by themselves would never have made the list. But the Hurt Business as a group should have been here. Drew McIntyre, Hurt Business, Lars, you go first. I'm definitely going Hurt Business. I mean, I, I'm I'm happy to see MVP back in on television. You know, I like I like his his whole trip. I always have, um, and I just. Drew McIntyre is not somebody I, I gravitate towards at all. And um, with the Hurt Business being like this kind of like version of the Four Horsemen, um, you know, just up up a level. And um, I think all of those guys that are part of that can wrestle and can perform. And like you said, it's 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 there. They might not be so much as individuals, so to speak, but as a unit it's pretty fucking, um, it's pr pretty awesome. So I'm going to go Hurt Business. D-Mac? Yeah, see, I'm going to go Drew McIntyre for the complete opposite, you know, and, and, and this is, Chris, this is what Dennis does. He puts these, like, 
semifinal rounds that should go together because it's, you know, for exactly the reasons Lars said, but I'm Scottish and I'm a, you know, my comeback story, I can relate to Drew McIntyre a lot. And I like, you know, the, I like his character. We all know that he's one of my favorites. So, um, you know, I, I just, I'm always intrigued, Dennis, how you always take like final matches that you like and stick them in the first round. Kudos. Every one of these is a final. Let's be honest with each other. Top 16 MVPs. Each one of these could be its own final. So this is what makes it harder, especially as we go. Chris Saban. Uh, man, I, I gotta say, this is really cool just cause I'm hearing like all these opinions and analysis of, uh, people that aren't in the wrestling business. And I, I, it's just really interesting to hear. So, you know, I appreciate listening to your guys's, uh, uh, commentary here, but I, well, I, I think I'm way, gonna... bro. Same, same <laughs> way back and forth. I don't know. Bro. That's, it's great. Well, I, I was going to go, uh, uh, Mm, see? Let's see. Oh. No, I'm, I'm still trying to decide. I was hoping you were going to go with Petey first. Can you go with Petey, then come back to me? I can, Petey. Okay, all right. So, yeah, this is a tough one. I almost wanted somebody else to go first. Drew did right. have a phenomenal year. What's up? Would you like me you to good, go? Dennis? <laughs> no, no, I'll go. You already, already, I'm, I'm going to take the ball and run. Whatever I say, you know, it is what it is. So, Drew, first off, phenomenal year. You know, carried, uh, you know, the company or, you know, he was the top guy we could say uh, through the whole COVID. So he didn't even get to like, it'd be interesting to see if we COVID didn't happen and how his run went and how the fans reacted to him. I mean, he had a huge Royal Rumble last year, um, you know, and he really, I mean, but you already knew they were setting him up to be the guy just based on NXT and stuff like that. You, you kind of knew it wasn't a surprise. The reason why I'm going to go with the hurt business on this one is because you got, um, you know, four guys, one of them, you know, Bobby Lashley was already set up to like, you know, be a star and stuff. But the other three, like I said before, I think on the previous podcast, they weren't doing anything. MVP wasn't even part of the company. And then they brought him back. He's a great mouthpiece, doing great with the company. Cedric doing absolutely nothing, lost in the shuffle. Same with Sheldon Benjamin. And now they're all relevant. So uh, just for the relevance sake, I would that's why I would say the hurt business. I'm going to go with on that one. I know that's, that's kind of a gutsy on my part. Cause Drew had a phenomenal year, but I'm going to go with hurt business. Now, Chris Saban, I'm going to make this hard on you because I am going with Drew McIntyre on this one. I think right off the bat, Drew was the, the mainstay of COVID. He was one of those guys where when wrestlers disappeared, took time off, he was out there week in and week out carrying that belt without fans. Imagine having to carry a championship without fan interaction. And the fact that the guy started with COVID and ended with COVID and is still on top tells me right there that he, he, he stood that test where we've seen a lot of wrestlers rise to the top during COVID, kind of fall short of where they want it to be. I'm giving it to Drew McIntyre. Chris Saban, you're the tiebreaker. Uh, I'm actually going to go with Drew McIntyre. So I was going to go with the Hurt Business based on uh, Bobby Lashley. Uh, he reminds me of a Battletoad in human form. Uh, Battletoad <laughs> is one of my favorite NES games. And uh, and he just, he looks like a Battletoad. Like he's like big jacked. I don't know. It just reminds me of Battletoad. So that's why I was going to go with that one. But I'm going to go with Drew McIntyre because he's make his entrance with that uh, Claymore sword. I don't know. I, I had a dream about making an entrance with a sword myself one time. And I just like, I remembered it for a long time. And then he ended up doing it. And I was like, man, that's really cool. I think so. Based on his entrance with the cool sword, I'm going to Drew McIntyre. Hey, yep. Saban, do you remember uh, a wrestle, what was it, wrestle project or wrestle aid project? Oh, yeah. Wrestle aid project. We had the swords and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Japanese promotion. They had instead of championship belts, they had swords as their titles, which was, I don't know, very cool. I thought I, I just yeah. like watching Teddy Hart and uh, Jack wrestle those, those shows, man. <laughs> oh. That's it. Was that the poster you gave me? Was that what that was from? Yeah, I had, I had I had doubles of it, and I think that was it. So I think, I, yeah, you got a poster of the WrestleAid project. Nice. How do you get deltoids that big? As Bobby Lashley's, because like that is sort right. of like he's got two battle toad helmets there. You're right, Chris. Like, it's so <laughs> it's like he died. I'm never gonna. Oh, all Bobby right, Lashley, the battle toad. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> here's where, right. 
here's this one. This this bracket, I think, is the toughest out of all of them, where I don't think the two guys are going to win it, but this is the toughest. And, and I matched them together. It's Kyle O'Reilly versus Eddie Kingston. Now, hear me out before you guys jump off and think. Both these guys came on really strong at the end of the year. I think their 2020 overall was okay, but if you look what Eddie Kingston and Kyle O'Reilly both did at the end of 2020, I think that equals just as much as some guys have done that whole year put together. I feel like, to me, this might be the toughest. I will start this one off. I'll set the tone, and I will go with Eddie Kingston because that promo he laid out in AEW showing up just wrestling a dark match versus, uh, I think it was a dark match versus uh, Cody Rhodes without a contract, ends what, like two weeks later, running his own stable, right there is just, you go from no contract to a throwaway match to running a stable on a major network, right there, that shows that you've got something. And I'm going Eddie Kingston with my vote on this one. Uh, Lars? Uh, you're going to have to come back to me. i got to think about this one. Petey? Um, I'm going to go with uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Um, just wrestling-wise, I, I really respect him. And, you know, he's Canadian as well, so, I mean, I like that as well. Uh, the thing is with Eddie Kingston, yeah, he's, he's had a great, we'll call it, uh, when did he get there, like quarter three, quarter four, last half of the year. Um, so you know, maybe next year. Uh, he, he might be an MVP, but the thing is, I'm glad that people are starting to see what Eddie Kingston could do on the mic and stuff. Like, I mean, he's a, he's a good wrestler, good brawler, you name it. Like he was already doing all that stuff before. Um, and like CZW, uh, he was doing like ROH stuff impact. He was like leading the, the, the charge of like the, um, LAX, the old versus new and stuff. And they were doing great television. So I'm glad that people got to see him, but, uh, Kyle O'Reilly, I mean, he's, I don't know why they haven't done anything with him sooner. Uh, he's, I feel like he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. Yeah. Chris Saban. Uh, I'm going with Eddie Kingston on this one, just based on his journey, uh, how long it took him to get to where he is today. Um, you know, I've seen the guy, for, you know, 15, 16, 17 years ago in like Northeast Indies, uh, Midwest Indies, and just knowing him for a long time, then, you know, finally seeing him finally pop up on a national stage. Uh, I was just really happy for the guy because he, he's always been a good dude and uh, always been super talented. Kyle O'Reilly, obviously ridiculously talented, huge fan of him and his style. He has such a, uh, a realistic style that he stands out from anyone else today, especially on the NXT roster. But uh, I'm just going with Eddie Kingston just because, just you know, I'm happy for – um, you know, all the hard work he's put in over the years and to finally see him make it somewhere. Lars. <clears throat> well, you know, I mean, that Finn Balor match that he had, it was so reminiscent of like a Masawa Kobahashi kind of thing happening. I mean, they both came out of there pretty beat up. And that's kind of what, what I was watching was like a Japanese style, strong style, uh, Noah-esque kind of thing happening. And it looked like, you know, I mean, I, I always thought highly of Kyle, Kyle O'Reilly and I, and I know very familiar with Eddie Kingston. And um, I think the one thing that's gonna bring me to Kyle, Kyle O'Reilly is that, that number one, that match. And number two, Eddie Kingston, sometimes his promos are just a little bit too, <clears throat> for me, it's a little bit too much. It seems like he's, he's, uh, he sort of eats, he eats up all the air. You know, but I understand that you're, he's excited and he wants to bring it and stuff like that. But as a wrestling fan, it's, it's, it's not like it's a turnoff, but just more, more or less like he, he overshadows. And I, and, and I think um, Kyle's just a better wrestler, I just think. For me, I mean, I, like I said, it just reminded me of watching like classic Japanese wrestling that match. And, I, and I'm, I'm a big fan of the NXT brand thing. So Kyle Riley. D-Mac, you're the tiebreaker, bud. I am. It, this is really tough because you look at, you know, uh, Petey, he brings up a great point. It's, it's you know, the, the end of the year. If, if the this is a sweet 16 on the whole year, you know, you got to go back to the storyline and, and the way that not only the wrestling, but it's the NXT and Kyle O'Reilly stories played out through 
you know, the, the war games and everything that's, you know, I, I love Eddie Kingston cause he put himself back on the map, but I'm going to, it's a slight, slight because Lars brought up a great point, which it intrigued me when I saw this match, that it was different. The Finn Balor, Kyle O'Reilly, it was uh, old school. They both, uh, were like winners, even though they both got out of there. And I think that I don't know. I'm going to give Kyle O'Reilly the win in this one Kyle. because of it, because it's not the whole year. Kyle moves on. Next round, it's Randy Orton versus AJ Styles. This is going to be easy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Lars, you go first. Then. Styles, next, <laughs> I didn't even hear it. It was so quick. What'd you say? <laughs> Hey, that's, well, what I said. I was, what I said was not Randy Orton. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm gonna. If you guess... couldn't have figured it out. Everything's not Randy Orton. Lars, you can pretty much. Um, it's Lar- uh, Randy Orton and Sonic Youth, Chris. <laughs> or there, there it is. The, the Look, band Sonic Randy Youth. Orton comes from <laughs> great stock, man. I saw his old man beat up people with a cast at the Cow Palace, and like. 19 <laughs> you know what i mean so Lars, you don't got to stick up for you like what you like bro i just i'm not down with his bad tattoos it just looks wrong it just, <laughs> <laughs> and too much tribal bro too much tribal uh, uh D-Mac, personal, what do you think? uncle allen uncle allen i love aj styles i i think his you know he's got like a he's a like jericho as far as reinvent even though it's, it's a lot of the same character, but he always he's my CTV for me. I just I just think he he hits every box. Should I ask you, Pete? Hey, uh, I'll I'll say this: Randy has had one of his best years in a very very long time. So AJ. I know a lot of people. Uh, yeah, and same with the, I think AJ's like 2019 was better than 2020, but that's just me. Um, but like Randy, a lot of people are just so turned off by him, like. It's almost like, okay, he redeemed himself in 2020, but people are still like, eh, you know, kind of, just kind of like what Lars is saying. Um, and I'm obviously, I'm impartial to AJ. AJ, I think, is like one of the best in the world, even like at his age and stuff. And, you know, looking at his journey too, he's been everywhere, done everything. Um, and he, I think he's the MVP of the company. So I, I'm going to go with AJ. Mm-hmm. Chris? Now, well, I want to mention that I saw fucking AJ Styles and Air Paris as a tag team in NWA yeah. in Marietta, Georgia. It's some weird, I mean, there was not a toothbrush to be had anywhere in that town. <laughs> <laughs> there goes all of our Marietta, Georgia I, thing. I, I, I oh, thing. man. I'm sorry, but I want to say it was like against Smart Bart Sawyer and uh, maybe, uh, was it? Pistol Pez Watley. Anyways, it was like a real. It was like an NWA show, and it was. And I was. I was producing a record for this band called the Anti Heroes, and we were in Atlanta. I found it was the day that Rick Rude passed away because they did a ten bell count, and we ended up driving to Marietta, Georgia, to see this fucking show. And I'm bringing my homie who doesn't know anything about professional wrestling. And he was just like, "Whoa, the chromosomes went down." And I was just like, "Well, welcome to a wrestling audience." You know what I mean? So, that's me. <laughs> oh, that one up, Josh. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't, so I'm just going to say AJ. <laughs> AJ with the first clean sweep. I, I would say okay. PD and I are a bit biased, you know. Yeah, I'd say. Well, look so. at AJ, That's though. Good. AJ's like been, you know, he's been, he's done way more with way more uh, promotions. He's been to, I mean, whatever. And I don't care what you say. When, when, what I love about, you know, PD and, and having like guys like Chris or whatever and to get the I want to know who are the good dudes. And not only does the test, it's like the music, right? Lars, the test of time. Can you last the test of time? That's wrestling to me is like that. And you stay true. And, and I just like the fact that, that everybody speaks highly of him. Like he's a good dude because he's a phenomenal wrestler. He's a phenomenal one. I mean, it's properly said. All right, we're going to move on. It's Kenny Omega versus Gallows and Anderson. I'm going to lead this one off, guys. I'll give you guys a second to think. I'm going Gallows and Anderson over Kenny Omega. I think he Kenny had a great 2020. 
His 2021 has been phenomenal with the impact stuff. I don't think you can lump what he's doing right now because I don't think he did much of the impact stuff at the at the end enough to impact what he was doing, although he did win the championship at the end. But he kind of had a a mediocre 2020 up until that point, the, the, the December-ish, and you can't really give him credit for 2021 on the end of 2020. And Gallows and Anderson with Talk and Shop of Mania – I mean, that kind of did change the business a little bit where you had these guys go out and self-produce a pay-per-view, called it horrible, made it horrible on purpose, and people bought it. So I'm tying that into my MVP boat here, and I'm going Gallows and Anderson. Uh, Pete? Wow, that is a good one. It's so funny because <laughs> Saban, like, just wrestled them on, well, what, aired on Tuesday, Saban? Yeah. Um <laughs> all three well, of them he just wrestled yeah i actually wrestled private party on uh, was saturday right yeah, yeah, yeah it was saturday, like we filmed yeah. it over the weekend it just hasn't aired yet yeah but yeah the pay-per-view that happened and that's so tough and dennis uh if you wouldn't have brought up that point uh about like you, kenny omega this is going to be the mvp of probably 2021 you know just how that all started and doing the interpromotional stuff and uh, that that's good stuff. I mean, I think the fans are really excited about it. Um, man, I'm, I'm biased towards Kenny Omega, but you also, man, the talking shop of mania and everything they did, uh, and the good brothers, ah, man, but they didn't get released till about COVID like February, March. So they did absolutely nothing in Q1 of 2020. Like, I mean, they were just kind WrestleMania. Of, they were part of the AJ Styles versus Undertaker match. Oh, that's right. Well, come on. They got beat up by the Undertaker in the bone They were so part about it. Man, this in is a tough finale, one. In the finale of the Undertaker's match, they were in his yeah. finale match, bro. That doesn't count for something. I I, I don't it, it, I don't think so. Not for that. Okay. Um uh, well, I mean, it did lead off into their boner yard match and stuff, but that is that is probably one of the toughest ones. I I, I so want to pick Omega because uh, just where we're at now, just knowing what he's going to roll into. Um, can't, can't do that. That's not. I know. If just based on 2020, uh, I would say the Good Brothers had a better year than Kenny Omega, so I'll go with the Good Brothers. D Mac, Good Brothers, talking shop of mania. Dude, yeah. I laugh my ass off when when the Karate <laughs> Man shows up on TNA. The, the so so now you got Talking Shop of Mania is the feeder ground to you can get in it. Like it's it's it brought wrestling to what it meant to be. So I think over the whole process, Petey, you're right. Omega's gonna take it all over and where it's gone. But I think setting up the process and and to be in the Undertaker's last match, cinema. The way that it went out, way that a 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 way that well, I just remember when I had this flashback of when I was 12 years old coming to a show in San Francisco, high on glue for the first time, and somebody played the Butthole Surfers, and that's what it sounded like to me. And I just got flashback. I got I got to calm down, five year old little Lars. Hold on a second. You might want to come back. Uh, but uh, Lars, what's your vote? Uh, you know what? Here's the thing. You know, I I really honestly think that and i don't know i'm not a wrestling uh insider guy but i almost felt like kenny omega you know the breaking of the team and the whole thing was almost as a plan to get him to this place to do what was what happened and that was to take the belt and you know the you know everything that we're seeing now so i feel a little bit you know partial like like you pd to him because he is like i think he's the probably pound for pound the best wrestler happening right now but then you talk about gallows and, and anderson and what they've been able to accomplish you know just with their career um it's hard and i'm a tag team guy that's what you know 
that's 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 kind of why I, I love wrestling so much is the tag teams and i think that they fit so well together him and anderson so uh gallows that is so i'm gonna have to go gallows and anderson just because i think what they did with the the last taker match yeah you know was it was what it was and it was very cinematic and very cool i thought um but uh you know what they were able to do over in in uh and in, in impact i i just think they're just they're i think they're they're the best tag team uh one of the best tag teams happening you know they're, they're always fun to watch and i love i love watching them fight you know you guys so it's like you know and i mean i don't mean josh I mean, <laughs> whoever that josh guy is yeah yeah so but i mean those are, those are like memorable matches for me it's like watching the machine guns and, and you know the, that's like why I got get excited about wrestling is watching and it's weird to talk about you because you're here but it's that's <laughs> and that's what puts it over for me is is guys like you that make them look so damn good so there you go oh, thank you we talk about you when you're not here anyway so it, there's no difference it's all good stuff but uh and Chris Saban what do you think yeah I've been uh, going with Gallus and Anderson I think they had a better 2020 without a doubt. Uh, I think I agree with PD that 2021 is going to be Kenny Omega's year, but yeah, 2020 Gallus and Anderson for all the reasons that were already mentioned. Did you watch talk and shop mania? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. You got it, man. It was, it was hilarious. I loved it. You would love it. Like back when we used to meet you and uh, Alex Shelley. Uh, yeah. used to uh, hey. watch like the bad wrestling and stuff like that. It's like that, Our man. kind of we stuff. We had this idea like, you know, 15 years ago, and now it's come to fruition, and it's awesome. I you got to watch it. it. I st if you want to watch it, I still have it on my, you know, Fight Network DVR thing. So, all right, let's move on. FTR versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. Now, wow. now I'll let you guys think. I'll go oh. first yet again. I'm going Sasha Banks and Bailey here. I think FTR had a great year. But once again, I think Bailey was the uh, absolute MVP of all the WWE with with her heel turn, her what she did, and teaming up with Sasha Banks. And she was teamed up. And the reason why I put them both together is they were kind of teamed up the majority of the year. And I felt like it would do them injustice if I split them up and put them into this bracket. But they held both respected championships and the tag team belts. I mean, they owned the women's division for the majority of the year. So I'm my vote's going to Sasha Banks and Bailey. Uh, Lars? Yeah, it's Sasha Banks and Bailey. I mean, that that's that was uh, definitely my first thought. FTR, I mean, obviously great, but I think those two women did so much for that company and made it interesting. And it made me interested, and I'm not really a fan so much of, of women's wrestling, but over the last couple of years, it's really grabbed me. And those two in particular are, are, are part of that reason. Sabin? Uh, I think Sasha and Bailey. I think those two carry the women's division, uh, along with Charlotte Flair. But I think those two just, uh, you know, kind of stand out a little more to me. Um, I met Bailey once. She was really kind. Um, and Sasha Banks is Snoop Dogg's cousin, so that's really cool. <laughs> D-back uh, You know what guys I gotta admit this Because I never See eye to eye with Dennis But Bailey Her whole work She is the MVP in, in my eyes Of 2020 And you put Sasha with her And you enhance that story I mean uh, going. I've been going back through And I just watched the Stone Cold interview with Bailey and just I love to know the why and behind it and to see just all the work that you guys do to put it put into your characters and the story to go into it so no one told a better story and more captivated like Lars said than Bailey and Sasha Pete um yeah it's got to be Sasha and Bailey I mean uh you know, just if for 2020 alone, like Charlotte wasn't even there. I think she left like after WrestleMania and just came back recently. Uh, you know, the year before that, I believe it was like uh, like Ronda Rousey carried the company. So, yeah, they definitely carry uh, the women's division and the majority of WWE. And, I, yeah, I'm going to have to go with them. FTR is great, uh, but it was definitely Sasha and Bailey's year. All right. We're down to the last four in the first round. It's John Moxley versus Chris Jericho. Uh, I'm going John Moxley. 
I think Jericho had a great 2020, but John Moxley's just reinvented himself. He's he's the John Moxley we used to love. Uh, it's a really hard, I know, for wrestlers to go from one company and be one identity and transition either back into who he used to be or another identity. And in the way John Moxley has been in 2020, I've almost forgot he was Dean Ambrose in WWE. I mean, this is one of the few wrestlers in the last 20 years that that made you forget who he used to be. And John John Moxley, I mean, phenomenal. AEW champion at one point, I'm giving it to Moxley. And he's gone out, whether it's a television match or a pay-per-view, he's put five-star matches on. My vote right off the bat, John Moxley, Chris Saban. Oh, yeah, John Moxley for sure. Um, yeah, like you said, him reinventing himself, but, at the, you know, especially for a main event WWE guy, but to leave and go somewhere. And uh, like you said, you don't really think about him being Dean Ambrose. Uh, usually when guys, especially main event guys leave and go somewhere else, they kind of carry that stink with them. Like they're always kind of like, oh, well, you know, like when Bret Hart with the WCW is kind of like, well, you know, Bret Hart's kind of a WWF guy to me, no matter what, even though I'm saying I'm WCW kind of carries that with them. And uh, yeah, he managed to, uh, you know, jump ship and not carry that with him. He seems like a completely different person. And like you said, you don't even think about him being Dean Ambrose. So yeah, John Moxley. Lars? Tough one, because you guys know how much I love Jericho. Just, uh, you know, John Moxley, though, like everybody's been saying, I mean, like, I, I really honestly don't, like you said, remember him as Dean Ambrose. And, um, you know, I, he was one of the reasons why my kids caught on to wrestling when, when he was with the WWE. So I always thought he was immensely talented. I love his fucking promo, his promos next level. I love the way he communicates. Um, I do think it's a little linear at times, but um, you know, I'm going to have to go Moxley for sure. All right, that's three for Moxley, DMac. Yeah, I mean, it's Lars. It goes without saying that our love for Chris Jericho, but it doesn't supersede here on the Wrestling Perspective podcast is that we tell the truth and the way it should be. And Jericho, you know, like I look at him more of owning 2019, and 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 he's just more of the bat, like the overall you know, more of the bigger picture, but as character wise and John Moxley and everything you've been saying is that his promos about, you believe, you believe that, and you see how talented he really is. Then you get into old matches and go, oh man, this guy's been around for a while. Then you see, you know, so it's just like John Moxley 220 for sure. Pete? You know, my vote doesn't matter, but I, I would go with Moxley, uh, even though with, as much as we love Jericho and stuff. And when I look at Jericho, like at his, his age too, like for him to be doing what he's still doing and being hip and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's, that's like really high points right there, but Moxley had a great uh, 2020. Yeah. In the round out the first round, it's Roman Reigns versus the young bucks. Mm. It, 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 yes, I know. Right. Mm. Pete, mm -mm. you're making the noise. I'm putting you on deck. Yeah. So, that's a tough one. So initially, I'm just going to go with my gut when I first, you know, said this. As much as, you know, Roman's been around for and the company guy forever, this this heel turn for him, uh, you know, was great. Um, I want it. I wish fans were still there because I'd like to see how the fans are reacting to it. Maybe they're, they're cheering him or whatever. Um, you know, understanding that he was out of wrestling for part of COVID because, you know, obviously with his – you know, cancer and stuff that, that makes sense. Um, but just from him coming back and reinventing himself, uh, I would have to go with him and you know how much, you know, I'm, I'm partial towards the young bucks as well. Um, but I think, uh, Roman Reigns had the better 2020. I'm, I'm going to go next and I'm going to say the young bucks. And for the same reason we knocked Eddie Kingston, not really having a tough, uh, a, a strong whole 2020, as much and who else we said somebody else missed some time earlier in this list is what I'm going to hold against Roman Reigns is as great as that hill turn has been as much as I love it he missed the majority of 2020 and I have to count that against him and and he didn't have a worthwhile opponent yet he hasn't had that match that made me go 
oh my gosh, you know, it's it's Roman Reigns. He's had a good setup to what we're going into now with the Samoan and the and the head of the table stuff, but he hasn't had that opponent other than, you know, Owens in 2021. I think he's off to being a guy that can challenge Kenny Omega if he keeps it up for the MVP of 2021. But as far as this list goes, I don't think he deserves to make it out of the first round just because he made a hill turn. So my vote's with the Young Bucks. D-Mac? I'm going Young Bucks for the overall. And also, too, because I watch Being the Elite and all the stuff behind it. And and you realize the bigger picture of what's going on and how they flip-flops. You know, they're, they're FTR, no matter who they wrestle. And and. It's funny because it's sort of like the old school Hulkster, right? The old school Hulkster had the one leg drop, you know, the, the and and that's it. You know, you knew it. Then, you know, these guys are super kicks, but they make it entertaining every time they do it. You, um, you see how much they love it. And I think they were one of the most consistent products of 2020. So I'm going Young Buck. Lars. Well, you know, I, 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 I've never been a Roman Reigns fan. So, and I think the best thing they ever could have done is put Paul E with them um, because it made him actually, like, I, I kind of started getting curious about what, what he was. But I, like I said, I'm a tag team guy. And, and to watch those two work with each other, and I understand it takes a lot of time to sometimes pull off these spots or whatever that they're doing. and there's a lot of that going on with them, but uh, they're more exciting to me. And I don't, I don't really, I'm not invested into that storyline. And as a fan, you know, that's what you want. That's you want to be sucked into the storyline. You want to be, you want to feel like you can believe in that guy or the, you know, whoever that character or whatever is. And I just don't. And I, I just, the, the suspension of disbelief just does not happen when he appears on the TV screen for me. But with the young bucks, I can I can relate because the, it's a family thing, you know. Uh, they work so well together. Uh, now the big reveal, you know. It's just it's it's I don't know. It's pre- I I I'm gonna just go and they're younger and and more my my thing I guess. All right, and, and Chris, non- what would you have gone with, Saban? Well, I'm trying to step back and see all of these as like from a fan's perspective. It's kind of hard when. Uh, your wrestler yourself and especially when you've worked with some of these guys but i i can't separate uh you know myself as the worker from myself as a fan of this one i'm completely biased i'm just going to go with the young bucks for sure it's not even close all right well we've rented out the first round chris saban let me ask you this before we move into the second round thoughts you enjoying this is this what you thought it would be uh, I, I didn't have any expectations. I, I was curious to see what it was like, but this is cool. I'm enjoying it. And uh, it's really interesting to hear uh, your guys' uh, you know, opinions and perspectives on everything. It, it's just cool. All right. Hey, Chris, oh. wait. That's, that's Rhino's podcast. Again, that's Low Expectations podcast. That's the wrong podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's Rhino's. So I don't want, I want to make sure I don't want to get gored. He knows where I live. <laughs> I don't want to get gored. All right. <laughs> Second round, let's get this thing going. It's Bray Wyatt versus Drew McIntyre. Who had the better 2020? PD Williams, you go first. Uh, man, uh, on the last one, I think I, I, I chose Bray and uh, the Hurt Business. Um, but now that these two are facing off, I mean, man, that's tough. I mean, Drew, I mean, everybody looks at the MVP as like, okay, that guy held the championship for so long. So he was the MVP because he carried the company. And I just don't think wrestling's so much like that anymore. We're like, you know, the top guys, the the draw, I think everybody has their, uh, what, what they look for in the show. And I think a lot of people are tuning in like for the feed and Bray Wyatt. Um, and I think he had a, a, a great, exciting, very creative year. So I'm going to have to go with Bray. D-Mac? You know what? It's going to pain me to say this, but you know, it's the same reason is that there's there's a ceiling to Drew McIntyre. His, you know, as, as great as he is, no matter what they do it, I don't know what the ceiling to Bray Wyatt is. It's whether it's he's playing the, the fun house or he's playing the fiend. I gotta I gotta give it to him because if he's must see TV to me, 
even more than Drew, even though I love Drew. So, Lars. Bray. Lars? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> man, I got to – I'm honesty, like it's the fiend, obviously. I'm, I'd much rather watch uh, – I, I just – I can't watch Drew McIntyre. I just – I'd much rather watch like fan cam – Sean Stasiak matches on <laughs> on old VHS cassettes, you know what I mean, from house shows that happened, you know, in fucking Minneapolis or whatever. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, Sean just, Stasiak. Wow, uh, I, I don't know why I pulled him out of my ass, Dennis, but I did. So. <laughs> So I'm gonna go with, with uh, Drew McIntyre, obviously. So you're gonna go with Sean Stasiak on this one. <laughs> Wait, how come he's not in this one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or his other character, Meat. Meat. <laughs> I want, you know what? I want to do like you know. What about Test? Meat versus the Battle Toad. Oh my oh. god! Dude. <laughs> it's like. Fuck. Test and Hillbilly Jim. Like, fuck, let's do one of those. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I can make one up eventually. Uh, Chris yeah, David. Uh, uh, Bray Wyatt. Go with Bray Wyatt, these two. With uh, Drew McIntyre, you kind of know what you're getting. You know what you're going to see. Um, Bray Wyatt, you don't know where you're going to see. It's going to be unexpected. And uh, it's, I just find it a little more exciting that way. And, uh, you know, I like his character a lot more. And it's just, it's open-ended. You can do almost anything with him. Kyle O'Reilly versus AJ Styles. By the way, I went uh, Bray Wyatt too, but my vote didn't count. O'Reilly versus AJ Styles. And I'll lead this one off because as much as I love AJ and AJ's been at the top, I think Kyle O'Reilly set himself apart. He started out as maybe the third or the fourth guy in the Undisputed Era. By the end of 2020, to me, it felt like he he surpassed uh, Adam Cole. And as far as talent and what he's done he's just kind of took that step and I really like what he's done on that product. No offense to AJ Styles because AJ's been at the top, but he's been kind of a flat line at the top. Nothing AJ Styles did from ninth uh, for what 2019 to 2020 really changed. It's just been AJ Styles at the top. I, I feel like the peak of Kyle O'Reilly is enough to earn my vote. So I'm going Kyle O'Reilly Lars. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, obviously I'm going to go Kyle O'Reilly on that one. I just, I just think that that kid's just super talented. I mean, it, his little crew though, like it's hard for me to watch them as a crew because I, I could just go down to the Mission District here in San Francisco <laughs> and get on fixies. So it's really hard for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mission and Sean Spaziak all in one podcast. Nice. Well, whatever, bro. I mean, you know, fuck. I'm, you know, listen, I'm tired. I got my kids all fucking weak. You're getting the real me, all right? So, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Wow. So, fucking telegraph road, baby. This I, is you know, way you know, I don't know. Way let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just preface this. I don't know any of these people personally, so it's definitely not an assault on their character. Okay. Hide your mid carters. Lars is on a tangent now. So, uh, Petey? Um, you know, uh, my I'm going to pick AJ again. I mean, this is this is tough because I mean, uh, I'm biased. I think when it comes to that, the the reason why I'm picking AJ is you know I, I I feel like he's always the MVP. You can always say like, hey, we need a good storyline. We need a good match. Throw AJ in it. He can make anything. You know, he can make anything glow uh kyle o'reilly i don't think he's peaked yet that's a thing so that's why i don't think he's the mvp of 2020 uh, if they keep going with him i think he has that good shot of getting it for uh 2021 this is tough i'm gonna go with dmac next ah uh, good because i go aj and here's why you 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 dennis the path you you gave for kyle o'reilly and stuff and, and his talent and stuff leads to him not his potential with AJ look where he went from the boneyard match into SmackDown into raw whatever switching sides always being the glue and always com comedic and, and always pulling it off he's such a like so consistent in his characters and in his wrestling you know and and it shows every time. Like now he's got what is it, Almas or whatever this dude that the huge, biggest human being ever, you know. Like I mean, it, and it works, you know. Like just all this stuff. So I go AJ. 
for the trip to the Final Four. It's tied at two. Chris Saban, all the pressure lays on your shoulders here. Oh, boy. Don't put that evil on me, man. Come on. Um, <laughs> guys, bro, on, just Ricky passes Bobby. the buck. You don't want the ball. You, you don't want the shot. I, I, so this is based off 2020, right? We're saying who had the better 2020? That's the question. 2020. Right? Yep. 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 So I'm going with AJ. I think AJ's just uh, had a better 2020 than Kyle O'Reilly. I think when it comes to 2021, uh, Kyle O'Reilly is going to have a better year. I think just he has like nothing but an upward trajectory as far as his uh, um, career goes. But yeah, I think 2020 AJ is just super reliable. You can count on do whatever you need to do. And yeah. How much AJ. of a bias? Just out of curiosity. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I like Kyle better than AJ, actually. So um, aside from this, so there's there's not much bias there. All right. Next, Gallows and Anderson versus the Young Bucks. Oh, come on. I, hey, listen. This is just how it goes, buddy. Are we, are, we doing, are we doing Gallows and Anderson against the Young Bucks or against Sasha and Bailey? I switched them. You switched the Sweet 16? Are you like the the... I'm like the star. Judge, jury, I, I, am. So right. I am. I am. I switched to put them. the motor team back in here. They win it. All right. Like, mm, uh, the, unfortunately, you're Canadian. Your vote does not count on that, but it does count in the Sweet 16. So, uh, your Canadian okay. vote, you go first. Okay. So, uh, good brothers against uh, the Young Bucks. That's what we're doing. Yep. Better 2020. Ah, oh, man. Man. Oh, man. Uh, Oh, both good. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go with the Good Brothers. I mean, they they took <laughs> just with this talking shop of mania. I know I keep going back to that, but like they took something that shouldn't have been ever popular and then made it popular. It's it's just it blows my mind that we can do that in 2020. Like how politically correct we are right now in society. I know it's like uh, like a, a small audience that they're reaching for, but. Just for them to do it and like people to not to take them seriously in this politically correct society we live in now, I'm gonna go with the the Good Brothers with Gallows and Anderson. Josh, uh, for 2020, I'm going with the Good Brothers. I think they've had more of an impact, pun intended, on the business uh, this year as opposed to the Young Bucks. I think the Young Bucks kind of uh, this was like a, I don't know, almost like a. a let let the other people in their company shine kind of year for them you know they kind of took a step back and uh you know gave other people the spotlight and they're stepping up now but 2019 was definitely you know the year for the young bucks because that's when they started aew and all that stuff happened but 2020 i'm saying the good brothers had more influence on the business it was their year dmac oh it was a good year it was a real good year. You can't, you, Tom Petey nailed it with the talking shop of mania, everything that's gone on 2020. Um, and exactly what Chris said, um, that the young bucks sort of stood to the back and, and let everybody else get to shine. So the good brothers. Uh, uh, Lars, not your vote doesn't count. So that takes a little pressure. Oh, no, I don't know if you know this, Dennis, but my vote always fucking counts. bro. <laughs> Guys, this just in breaking news lars's vote counts um first of all there is nothing never funny about dick jokes okay though dick <laughs> jokes last night, the test of time i don't care what the political climate we're in but if you have a dick you're funny okay <laughs> i mean let's just not let's just let's just get that out in the open um good brothers obviously for sure i, I think you know they're, they're super funny and if the young bucks ever decided to come do our show like the good brothers did then maybe i'd be a little bit more swayed to vote for them but they haven't so probably they won't after this but um good brothers for sure you know hey De hey dennis that was the sort of Kendall's not here, but that was Kendall's answer right there from Lars. He gave Absolutely. him some love. Yep. That was a Fredrickson Kendall combined <laughs> answer. <laughs> Is Jason a vote for anybody who's been on the show? Number yep. one. <laughs> I'm going uh, Gallows and Anderson as doesn't well. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. What do you think, Dennis? And anyway. finally, to end the second round, 
it's John Moxley versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. See that that's why uh, I switched them. Oh. I, I wanted to have a a good. This could have been a final in any other list, and this is to see who gets to the final four. I'm going to start off with I'm going to go Bailey and Sasha Banks. As much as I love Moxley and I respect what he did, once again, harken back to the first round, you know, what Bailey and Banks did was kind of unprecedented in the WWE where they both held SmackDown and Raw championships. They both held the tag team championships together, and they ran that woman's division the whole time. COVID, I would almost say they ran the whole WWE because – they should have been main event and pay-per-views with the with the push that they got. So I'm going Banks and Bailey and kind of a surprise pick. Lars? Uh, I just lost you. Hold on a second here. All right, D-Mac. I'm going for the whole, and the fact that you put the two of them together, that gives them double power. But the way that the ladies led and carried the WWE for some sort of fact and kept it interesting – throughout the whole year again shot out and and i love you know mox is always going to be mox now right so there's moxley and and it's like the you know the character is that like you know how more sinister or how more like ass kicker can he get right with with sasha and bailey they've developed their characters so they can go anywhere and they get my vote here pity Oh, it's tough for me. I mean, I don't want to say it, but, uh, you know, for basing it on 2020, I'm going to have to say Sasha and Bailey. Um, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, right. Chris Saban. I, I don't have much explanation. I'm just going off the, the, the year on the 2020 and what you okay. said. Yeah. Saban. So I'm going to go with John Moxley in this one. Uh, I think, what John Moxley contributed to AEW is way more than what Sasha and Bailey contributed to WWE. I think as like that, the WWE is a machine that's going to keep on moving no matter who's there. It's going to keep on going. And I don't think any individual really, um, well, within the last, you know, whatever, for, for quite a while time, many years, there hasn't been really one individual that's really moved the scales. Um, for the WWE, but I think as far as bringing like legitimacy and just eyes and attention to a new product, I think John Moxley just contributed uh, way more to AEW. Lars, this is a tough, tough one. <clears throat> I'm getting choked up. No, uh... <laughs> you know, see the thing with Bailey is she's you know she's San Jose girl, and I'm from Campbell. Is very close, so she's Bay Area, you know. So I'm I'm kind of going wanting to go there because and I and I used to see her on the Indies a lot, and I in and saw how like she kind of did her thing, and I would see her at the indie shows here locally. So um, and she was always very entertaining. But on the other hand, John Moxley, like I feel, if it wasn't for him, I mean. I don't, I, I think he was the perfect guy to, to, uh, for AEW. And in, I think what Chris was saying was basically that the WWE is that machine that they're going to find somebody, you know what I mean? And it's kind of on you to shine. Um, so I'm going to have to go, fuck, man. John Moxley. All right. Well, Moxley comes one vote short, making into the round. Doing a little juggling here for the final four, but we've got two singles, two tag teams. I'm this. Listen, any shockers for you guys right now? Because I'm a little shocked Bailey and Banks made it this far. I'm kind of shocked Gallows and Anderson made it this far. What about you guys? No. Pete? No. Um, I'm a little shocked about Sasha and Bailey. I, you know, they were teamed up against uh, the FTR and Moxley. You know, I didn't know. I don't, didn't think they were going to beat Moxley, but uh, good brothers. I thought everybody was going to vote for Omega over uh, the good brothers. But um, yeah, I mean, the tag teams, I'm kind of shocked. Uh, AJ and Bray, not really. Hmm. I'm a little shocked uh, seeing Mr. McCarty smoke a blunt. 
<laughs> oh, you should watch more podcasts, bro. Shocked in a, shocked in a good way, here. though. It's a, yeah, no, it's a good way. Well, I got, we you, do know, the, you know, 2020, speaking since we're doing a survey, everybody, it was a tough year for all because we had COVID and stuff. But if you're Darren McCarty and you live in Michigan, gambling's legal, cannabis is legal, and I got a WJR show at 7 to 8 at night. So you know how messed up it is. It's not that bad, Chris. We're getting there. It's Motor not. City Machine Guns to the top, baby. Hell yeah. Yes. I love Michigan. A promo. I love <laughs> Michigan. Promo. All right. I just want the microphone. I don't I want anything to do. There you, oh, that's where you are? Oh yeah, I'm close. Uh, I'm no, yeah. Oh, okay. You no, I, I'm actually out in the country. <laughs> where where are you? Pinkney. Yeah, oh, it's great out there, dude. Mm-hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Did, did some of D Max weed smoke going to my computer and did i hear that sasha and bailey just went to the next round i thought moxley did nope he went nope. one vote shy this is uh... <laughs> that's that's why i love it see this is this is our next part Lars. you're more than welcome to fly out but we need to do a party with pete d mac and and say i would love to hang out with you guys love to hang with I'll, I'll, I'll be wearing a, a gas mask around d mac but <laughs> Yeah, no, I'll Absolutely. smoke that. I'll smoke that with you. See, there you that go. See, I, want you, I want you guys to enjoy your lives. I just if, <laughs> what happens to me when I get on that shit? I have that allergic reaction, as DMAC knows. I break out into handcuffs, and I don't want to. Uh-huh. <laughs> on on weed, bro. On I anything, mean- dude. You can fucking put Advil on me. I got my cock out, out running down the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> You're a rock star, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Nothing to do with the way you put in your body. Listen, I'm gonna be 50, I'm gonna be 50 this year. There's nothing sexy about a 50 year old cock running down the street high, high on Advil. This is not. <laughs> hey, dude, he's smoking the wrong shit, Chris. Jesus Christ, there's no. Oh. I mean, I get that you want your cock out, but there's no reason you should be losing breaking out in handcuffs. I'm a born streaker. My mom used to have to put suspenders on my diapers. You know what I mean? So I just want to, I just want to get naked. I mean, I'm, I'm so happy you came, Chris David. Thank you for <laughs> that's how I feel. Like, that's how you know, if something traumatic happens. I just strip. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> traumatic. Uh, else. Remind me, Pete, if Lars comes over, we have to hide the uh, Flintstones vitamins from him, okay? Absolutely, and my dog's vitamins, every, all, everything. <laughs> That's What's right. that dude on Advil? <laughs> <laughs> all you right, what, he, he doesn't look good, and his headache's gone. <laughs> final, <laughs> final four. Enough nudity on this podcast. Final four, right. first round, or here we go. Well, first of the four. Uh, what are we talking about? Are we ready? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You, you don't have to ask Petey twice. Right. I'll take a shot. Okay, let's go. That's right. That's right. Put it this way. Two of us wrestle other dudes with their shirt off. So how are you being so fucking, come on, let's go. Let's be honest here. Jeez. Oh, here we go. <laughs> there we go. See, there we go. D Mac, D Mac, take your fucking oh. shirt off, man. Why don't we Come have guys. any videos on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Here he goes. There he goes. <laughs> you can't get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking later. <laughs> I'm fucking late. <laughs> it's so hot. It's fucking cold in the D. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh. What are we doing? Uh, I. <laughs> I lost my ear. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. There we go. Fuck, I, hey, I got like four layers on, but I'm team playing. <laughs> all right, all right, let's get back on track. It's Bray Wyatt versus Gallows and Anderson to see who goes on to the finals. I mean, once again, right here, this is a final of its own. Shirtless Petey Williams, you go first. Well, I'm going to say. Oh, fuck, <laughs> fuck you. No, no, that's dirty pool right there. Uh, 
I'll just keep this short and sweet. Since we all have this <laughs> off, I mean, I'm going to have to go with, uh, um, I'm going to have to go with Gallows and Anderson. I mean, I just, the word, I'm, I'm more like them than the Fiend and, uh, yeah, Gallows and Anderson, the good brothers. Lars? Yeah, I mean, that, this is a tough one because I do really love the Fiend and I, and I love his whole character. I love, you know, the whole little, you know, thing that they have um, going with them. But Gallows and Anderson, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not just saying this because my shirt's off, but they excite me. <laughs> <laughs> excite me. <laughs> so Gallows, Gallows and Anderson, I just think they're fun. They're so fun. Uh, you know, it's just great. I love the the, the dynamic between the two of them. D-Mac? I'm going with Gallows and Anderson because of Talk and Shop and everything else. And when it comes down to it, who who is they going against? Bray Wyatt. They go, oh, Bray Wyatt. Yeah, I love him, but I like the like the talking shop and mania taking over the edge. Now, what's going on with TNA and AEW and the cross promotions and how much fun it looks like everybody's having? That's what I that's what I like. You know, that to see that when you guys are wrestling each other and everybody's all in. On the are same you putting page. the back on? Oh, it's fucking cold. Jesus fucking Christ. We're almost done, D. <laughs> I fucking dude, I'm getting cold. Hurry up. I got fucking ice cutters in here. All right. I'm gonna go Bray Wyatt. I think if you put their 2020s together, Bray Wyatt and Gallows and Anderson both had amazing, but the what Bray Wyatt has done to once again, we talk about evolution of a character. He took the Wyatt family, a stale Bray Wyatt, and changed it. And really brought that cinematic universe back. Brought it, something that we haven't seen in wrestling in a long time. Whether you like the hocus pocus stuff, that's that's your you know your whatever. But I love what he was doing. I loved everything he changed. I, the Firefly Funhouse. This evolution of Bray Wyatt, I think, in 2020 deserves to go to the championship, but it won't now. But he got my vote, Chris Saban. Uh, well, they both make me laugh in different ways, but I think the Good Brothers make me laugh in a more uh, realistic way as that, that I can relate to. Like, the Good Brothers are definitely guys that uh, I just want to hang out with, you know, I just sit around, have a few beers, and and laugh or whatever. And, you know, Bray Wyatt's cool, for sure. I'm a fan, and, you know, I'm into, like, teleportation and, um, you know, fire. magic and, yeah, fire, fire. and, yeah. you know, all that all that cool stuff, you know. But, uh, yeah, I think I can just relate more to the Good Brothers, so I'm going with them. All right, to see who will face them in the championship round, it's AJ Styles versus Sasha Banks and Bayley. MVP 2020, this is, once again, another one that could be its own final. Lars, you go first. Oh, man, I mean, no, I... Oh. Do you want me to come back to you? Yeah, you might want to because I'm, um, uh, yeah. Chris Saban? What were the options again? We were at Sasha and Bailey and AJ? AJ Styles. <clears throat> uh, I, this one's a little too hard for me to choose. I'm going to, I think I'm going to go with AJ though on this one. I can't really elaborate why, but I think I'm just going to pick AJ. All right, Petey. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I was definitely going to say AJ for sure. Um, I just want to see AJ against, no, AJ against Good Brothers, you know, in the finals, but because um, that's going to be a tough one. But no, AJ, uh, for, I mean, name a year he wasn't really like one of the top wrestlers. I mean, it's, it's hard uh, for him to not be in the finals. That's, that's, that, that's, that's kind of tough if you don't put him in the finals of anything. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to say AJ. I'm going to be Sasha. pissed. I'm, yeah, he would be. He'd like. Uh, well, slam he's out and then because I'm going Sasha Banks and Bailey D Mac. You're next. You know what? If we're taking in of all of 2020 into account, I don't know if any of you guys are Star Star Wars nerds, but I am, and the Mandalorian. So Mercedes. Uh -huh. Uh, Varnaz or Ver whatever, whatever Sasha Banks' real name is, she was yeah. in there. She killed it. That's what tips the scale. Sorry, Uncle fucking AJ. Love you, but you're fucking finishing yeah. with fucking 
conference finals money this year. Uh, that's it. Takes it over <laughs> yeah, the Mandalorian. Man. Takes it over the top for me. No, no, I no. almost want to trade my. I almost want to switch based on that. I forgot that you know Sasha Banks got to wrestle. Blah, blah, yeah, fat. well, I was gonna. You know switch what I mean? Back. I mean, come on. I would, you would have had me after I would have switched. Would, they wouldn't even be here because I would have gone with Moxley because I wouldn't realize how I deduct points for working for WWE. I forgot that. Yeah. So <laughs> so technically, it, it it I don't know, man. It's just like somebody messed up a move in the match. Well, <laughs> Lars, this is what you get for not being able to answer. You're the tiebreaker <sighs> now. No pressure here, buddy. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's I'm I'm. Oh. Yeah. I just, I just, I honestly think though that those two girls, women, did more for their division. Let's just say, I think everybody's right. We all love AJ. He can fucking wrestle anybody, anywhere, anytime, do anything. He's he is phenomenal. He is one of the best ever. But I uh, want to give kudos to those girls because um, they they really kind of captured a lot of imaginations and mine too. And actually I, 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 I was bored with the Charlotte flares and in those, and, and when I, Bailey to me, is like so freaking real, you know what I mean? I can get, behind, I can get behind that, I, you know, figuratively. So. Yeah. <laughs> As he's top naked. Hey Dennis, can I ask a question to our wrestlers sure. on that point? Um, because they've been in the business. So this is both to Chris, to you and to Petey. Is there more of excitement on the male? Be is there more like because of the talent? Like, is it looked at from from the performers? Like, there's such more women, talented women to work with, or, or that that are doing it or representing than it. You know, the, I guess as opposed to growing up in the diva era and now, like, girls are legit wrestlers, right? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Oh yeah. I, I like. I, Saban, were you around when Tessa was with us still? Yeah, a little bit, right at the tail end. Right okay. Before she left. I remember, like, when she first came on, and I was like, why? Like, my first question is, how did we land her, and why isn't she with WWE? And, you know, whatever the answers was, it doesn't matter. But, you know, the, the females now coming in here, I mean, it's they're, – they're relevant now. Back in the diva era, it was like, okay, you know, they're going to show their boobs and stuff, and – you know, they, they weren't athletic and stuff, nothing against them. They had, they had a role and it's what they, you know, people wanted at the time, but right now they're legit wrestlers and, you know, they can, they can kick ass, you know, I mean, I would be afraid of some of the females if I were to have to go toe to toe to with them in the rim ring, like, like, like Ronda Rousey or Oscar, Oscar or something like that. Jordan Grace. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the women have, you know, women grow up wrestling fans they have uh they love wrestling just as much they have just as much passion for wrestling they work just as hard um so yeah and they're they're finally reaping that uh and they deserve it you know i mean uh, like you said when you watch a wwe like years ago right brawn panty matches and stuff like that, right. that that was the representation that women's wrestling had so uh I, th I think it's just really cool overall for not only only for women or girls that grow up who want to be wrestlers but for just women in general to show that uh you know uh they're just as good and just as talented as the men well, you yeah know, you can, I feel like once fit finley got in there and started training some of those girls that's when it really started to change and i mean you know, I always was more attract, more attracted to like Aunt, uh, Lita than a Trish Stratus. You know, not because Trish snubbed me, or and I knew Lita or whatever, but it's just because I didn't. That that whole like fitness model thing was just never really my like. I didn't see that as a wrestler. Now I see wrestlers: Bailey, Sasha Banks. Those are they're wrestlers to me. All right. Well, listen. Uh, in a shocking turn, I didn't see this coming. We have two tag teams in the the championship round for 2020 MVP. Voted on five of the probably the most smartest guys. We've got two wrestlers who are in the industry. We've got Lars, the DMAC, and myself. We're, we all know our stuff. Here we are. Gallows and Anderson versus Sasha Banks and Bailey for the MVP of 2020. Now, take this in for a second because... This is a tough one. Uh, I I I'm not even gonna go first because I don't know who I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna throw. I'll it go. I'll go first. 
Chris is doing some aerobics over there. He's got I'll go first. <laughs> I'll go first. And then <laughs> since we're half naked and Lars is taking it back to the primitive self and he can't take fucking Flintstone vitamins or how supposed to pee in his out. I think I got a better chance of sleeping with one of the good brothers than I do with Bailey or Sasha. So I'm going with the good brothers. Back to the dick jokes, baby. Yeah. All right. Sex Ferguson's my favorite wrestler, by the way. Sex Ferguson, you're out there. <laughs> PD Williams. Um, so I'm just taking into account everything that everybody has been saying uh, about both these teams, you know, throughout this uh, throughout this show. Man, I mean, it, it, it's a tough one, but, you know, one of the things that I keep thinking of is when Saban said, you know, no matter what, if you're in WWE, if they're going to push you, they're going to push you, they're going to make you a star. Um, I think a lot of it, you know, they, they put Sasha and Bailey in that spot to become stars. It's hard to do. If they give you the ball and you don't run with it, you're done. So they ran with it. So kudos to them. However, the Good Brothers, they're in this finals. They're non WWE don't have the machine behind them pushing them and they're pushing themselves. They have their own brand, if you want to call it that, but they're, they're doing everything on their own. Um, they're, they're putting relevance back on impact and stuff. Eyes back on impact. They're doing stuff in AEW, doing cross promotion. I mean, how could you not give it to the good brothers? They're the one of the most the best things that happen in 2020. All right. Two for good brothers, Lars. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you know, I still remember when Gallows was wrestling around with my my oldest, you know, in my in my living room. And that's just kind of who they are. You know, I can connect with them, you know, and and they're to me like what they've done in their career. And that, you know, I know, you know, they've held so many different titles and, and stuff like that. And, I, and when and I still believe that means something, you know, in a lot of ways, if you're giving somebody a title to run with it, at least giving them a shot. But I don't I think the Good Brothers are a no brainer on this one just because they, they have a, all the experience and it's not. And, you know, they're just like DMAC was saying, I'd probably have a better chance fucking one of them. <laughs> now that they've seen my shirt off, I mean, who's going to say fucking no? You know? So, but uh, no, the Good Brothers for sure. I think they, they're just so dynamic and, 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 and really made me really, really pay attention to, to that TV show. This is a tough one. I, I think I'm going to slightly go with the Good Brothers as well. I, I was really pushing for Sasha and Bailey because I thought what they did was amazing. But kind of what Pete said, Gallows and Anderson are two guys that have done nothing but create gold without any sort of big machine behind them. And you have to give them credit in today's day and age where you throw a rock and you hit somebody with a podcast. I don't know. I know five of them right now. Well, four, Josh, you don't, you don't have them. But Saban. 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 Uh, Josh is. Yeah, Josh. sorry. You had some guys named Josh. Dude, he stole Josh's phone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just sorry. The sorry. sorry, whoever. Uh, um, but uh, Gallows and Anderson, for me, I think slightly edge out Sasha Banks and Bailey. And I hate to say this, but I almost view them with the WW machine as a negative here for voting for them, which kind of almost sounds counterproductive, but... That's where I'm going. Chris Saban, where would you have voted? Yeah, a uh, clean sweep, Gallus and Anderson. And that's not to take anything away from Sasha or Bailey. They're obviously super talented and, you know, passionate about what they do and it shows their performance. But yeah, the Good Brothers have just managed to become successful beyond the WWE. And I think that's something pretty unique to talents. Uh, some guys leave the WWE, guys and females uh, leave the WWE and, you know, it's it's just they never capture what they had there and i think the good brothers are doing a good job of that maybe even slightly cooler than what they were when they were there Way so cool. so we're going to quick promote and then uh for everybody at home you guys are going to bed we'll hang on for a second after we end the show uh, chris saban stick around i'm sure we're all going to geek out because we didn't really have that geek out moment at the very beginning because surprise here you are uh by the way thank you once again for joining us uh chris where can people find you on social media shirtless uh shirtless i'm not sure i mean 
search Chris Saban nude pics, something might come up, something might not come up. I don't know. Uh, but I, I only have one social media account. It's Twitter, and that's at Super Chris Saban. That's the only social media I have. DMAC? Uh, Real Darren McCarty on Instagram and Facebook. Darren McCarty 4 on Twitter. Um, yeah, whatever. Darren McCarty brand, if you want to check out some of the cannabis I was smoking. Lars? Uh, obviously on Chris Saban nude pics. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm in that. I will be superimposing my face on your body, my friend. But um, uh, you can find <laughs> Lars on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm Roots Radical zero one. Twitter, whatever. By the way, we haven't even talked about it. You're doing some cool stuff over there where you're selling some of your toys. I am. I'm selling a lot of a lot of my stuff, my records, shit like that on this on this called Laws's Laka, whatever. It's there's an inside joke there, and I'm not even gonna about to get into it right now because I got my shirt off. And <laughs> it's fuck you know, San Francisco is the, one of the coldest places on fucking planet Earth. But thank oh. God I got bacon for blood because my mom is Danish. She fed us bacon every day for fucking 25 years. So I got bacon fat for blood. And I'm keeping warm that way. So DMAC, if you're ever feeling cold, I'll send you some bacon. Thanks, brother. No problem. Hey, and, th and thank you, Chris. That, it was aw oh, awesome to have you, yeah. man. Super thank happy. you. Really Shout cool to meet you. Thanks for sure. doing that, PD. I know it was probably you. Yeah, it wasn't me. He doesn't reply. It well, wasn't Dennis. Fuck. <laughs> no, God, no. Pete, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at uh, IPD Williams. And I just posted my first Instagram pic in like, I don't know how long. And I'm also on Instagram at IPD Williams. Want to do some more Instagram stuff. Hold on, guys, don't move. Let me get a snapshot of all of us right now. Suck it in, guys. Suck it all in. There we go. Good. All right. And that'll be on the Instagram. There. <laughs> Great. I think, uh, I think maybe I should have did it with our shirts on first. <laughs> no way. <laughs> this is how we should start doing the podcast from here on out, just shirtless. Well, you know, I think we broke because uh, that's the only action Dennis is going to get close to. That's the most skin Dennis has seen in a long time. All right. And, and real quick on our end, uh, 248 455 6565. That's our PWI uh, 24 7 hotline call. Leave a message, whatever you want to talk about or discuss or disagree. Thank you, Lars. Uh, that's the hotline you call. Leave a voicemail. We have the new YouTube channel. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast forum and you're wondering why we're talking about being oh. is because we are. So you can actually go over there and watch it. Wrestling Perspective, subscribe rate, blah, blah, blah. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, Josh, everybody hang on. We're going to keep going. The rest of the show is over.